Hello folks. Today I decided to do an experiment. How about that? Well, I've had the idea in my head for a while, but I just got around to doing it today. So we're going to do it together. Well, I'm going to do it alone. You're going to watch it. The gist of it is I'm measuring with a decent amount of accuracy how much temperatures affect power consumption. So well, let's go over the basic system, the the system's uh, base specs, and how I'm gonna test it. You guys get an idea. Uh, this is well, this is just a backup system I had for a while, and uh, decided to use it today. It's a 4670K at 4.5 gigahertz. We got two GTX 780s. Yeah, I know they're about four years old now. Both reference cars, liquid cooled, with backplates. Uh, yeah, they are overvolted and overclocked. They're running at 1200 megahertz core and 7 gigahertz memory at 1.225 volts. So I basically pushed them as far as possible with the BIOS mod. And the processor, as I said, it's just that. Now here's a program I would never normally use, Furmark. It's just a heavily synthesized stress test and it's overkill. The only reason I'm using it is because, well, we are doing a massive stress test, so it's the best tool for the job today, and only today. I have two monitors, 1080p panel and a 2560 by 1080 ultra wide panel. The reason I'm not using this is because, funny enough, uh, I couldn't get the 99% or 100% GPU usage on the 1080p panel because the CPU was being bottlenecked. Basically, Farmark uses two cores and pegs them at 100% and, you know, you get bottlenecked and the GPUs don't go anywhere. So I just increased the resolution by a little bit with this backup display to get close to 100% GPU usage to get the most power out of it. And today we have a heat kill heat killer. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, this is a, a kilowatt. I think the model is 3380. I bought many years ago. It's still doing fine today. Right now you can see the idle power consumption if I just flick the switch and yeah, we need to reset that actually. Yeah, right now it's yeah 130, 140 watt idle power consumption sitting at desktop. That's included uh, the monitor. So right now the only things are plugged into it is the um, the two monitors, the speakers, and the computer, and something else that's not in use. And uh, yeah. That's the power consumption at idle, about 140 watts. Now that's not important. What I'm going to do is run Furmark and take a base power consumption measurement as, uh, as soon as it loads. Uh, it's a little known fact that transistors lose efficiency as they heat up. So you want to keep them as cool as possible to be as efficient as possible. It also lowers power consumption. That's part of the efficiency equation. Now, I don't know by how much or if lithography has a role in it, NVIDIA, AMD, I don't know. This is just one test as a proof of concept that this phenomenon is real. Although with a liquid cooled system, uh, we do negate some of the, well, it's not going to exaggerate the result as much because it's going to maybe plateau at 70 degrees, 65, 70 degrees, the GPU temperatures at the end. That's just what I'm guessing. Right now they're sitting at an average of 27 degrees, so one, the top one's 28, the other one's 26. So, yeah, we're gonna hit GPU test run and uh, see the magic happens. Right, so GPU stress test. All right, so it's running and the GPU usage is at well, close as 100% as you can get, 96, 97%, and power consumption is 692. Let's call it 690, yeah, 692, 695, right about there. We'll call it 695. Let's, uh, now, as the GPUs heat up, they're going to use more power. That's an obvious fact, but by how much? We'll find out. Right now, they are at an average of 43 degrees, but they will go up. I promise you that. And I'll cut the video here and come back when the system has reached an equilibrium and we'll see how much 
this number has changed. It's already gone up by like four or five watts. Eh, it's good, but it works. All right, see you guys in a second. Okay, folks, it's been about 45 minutes, and I'm back, and let's take a look at those temperatures. 67, 63, let's say average of 65 degrees between two cores. Everything else is nominal. Now, let's take a look at that power consumption figure. And it is, ooh, 740, I just saw. Let's see, what, what is the maximum? Oh, so the max was 748 watts. Uh, that's 55 watts over the stock that we tested, I think. Stock, I mean, uh, at the beginning of the test. Uh, it was, what, 692, I think those were the... That was the power consumption. Now it's, yeah. So 55 watts extra. Uh, yeah, that's the result. Conclusion? Well, not a whole lot of people have systems like this that can consume this much power. I mean, these days, you're looking at, uh, what, i5, i7s with a GTX 1060 or 1070, maybe a 1080. Those would consume 250, maybe 300 on their maximum load. And that's about it, really. And I forgot to mention, for cooling, I'm using a uh, dual 140 and a single 120 millimeter fan. Both are on push-pull. Just to put it in context, I'm also using an 80 plus uh, gold 750 watt power supply. It's the EVGA G2 750. Obviously, the more efficient your power supply is, the better or lower that number is going to be. Now, it might not matter to you. <clears throat> to go, oh, well, maybe I play a game an hour or two per day, and so what? 50 watt extra, the worst case scenario, I don't care. Well, think of large scale supercomputers, data centers. Uh, servers they could use tens of thousands of cores or graphic cards at a time like the most powerful supercomputer right now is what has over 10 million processing cores with their own proprietary CPU let's say 50 watts if you have 10,000 computers or systems th these are usually just saying uh, it's the Xeon processor with two or three or four graphic cards uh, plugged in to do you know, parallel processing, uh, fluid dynamic calculation, scientific, uh, you know, oil research, weather calculation, you name it. Or just, uh, you know, data transfer. Uh, 50 watts per 10,000 computers, that's half a megawatt. Half a megawatt. That's a huge amount of power that you can save. So this is why the servers usually use high-speed, ultra-high-speed fans, extremely loud, but the keep the temperatures fairly low they also have air conditioning and uh, yeah spaces are optimized cooling is optimized uh, the air conditioning helps uh, not only lower temperatures lead to longer lifespan for the components and longevity they also as I demonstrated reduce power consumption so it's a cascading effect if you let it get too hot it'll consume more power meaning it'll get hotter consume more power so what's the takeaway from this I, I guess uh, invest in decent cooling if you can not that it would matter much but uh, think if 10 million people did this they dropped their temperature from like if this was an air cool scenario those cars would be running at 85 90 degrees and the Delta for the power consumption would have been much much higher so I'm not gonna be part of Greenpeace or a hippie and say oh go save on power and reduce cooling but uh, just wanted to give you guys a uh, perspective that uh, yeah I don't know what else to say it's as simple as that temperatures affect power consumption see ya